Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. Back in Chapter 9, we learned how to use files. Okay, you saw how you could use the scala.io.source type to read in the contents of the file. It gave you an iterator, and, and that allowed you to read in pretty much any text file that, that you wanted to. Many of you, for that, if you're working through the book, you probably uh, saw, and maybe even worked on, a project where you had a user and they would walk around inside of a, a maze that was a text-based maze. Um, that assignment shows in some ways the power of what you can do with the flat files, but it also shows some of the, the limitations of, of basic, plain, uh, in some ways unformatted text files. And so if we were to go and look at the sample map that is given on the book's website uh, and hopefully if you actually did this project you made your map larger than these three rooms um, it looks something like this now there are a number of shortcomings to to this format for one thing unless you actually know what's going on <clears throat> this file is very hard to understand there's these magic numbers there's a one here and a one here and a two here and a zero and a two and unless you work at trying to figure out what's going on, it's not very obvious uh, what these things mean. Um, there are other things like, for example, this long description here is all made to span one line. And that's for ease of reading with the uh, I.O. source, because if I break this across multiple lines, then I have to put in here how many lines it's taking up or, or some other way so that I know when the description ends. Uh, I guess the standard way of doing that would be to have the last line of the description be a, a period. Um, but this file here doesn't tell you anything about it. So flat text files have advantages of things like I can open them in VI and I can play with them. Uh, they are easy to take anywhere. Um, they're flexible. They do have downsides if you're dealing with a lot of numeric data. Uh, text files are not very efficient, they're not very fast, and they waste space. Uh, and then they also have this problem that we're talking about here. They don't have any inherent information stored in them. And if you worked on this, you probably had at least one time where you had a bug and it wasn't in your program, it was in your text file. Uh, if you have bad formatting, in, in a flat text file here. So for example, if I left out the two here, or if I added an extra line, an extra exit to this room and forgot to update this number right here, uh, or if I will add a whole bunch of rooms and I don't update this number up here, any of those things will cause all types of problems. Um, and and it's, it's hard to remember things. And I also, I can't put in any additional information. Okay, I have to, this file needs to be exactly number of rooms, room name, description, room uh, exit number exit information boom 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 and it's possible that you could you know you can change the format of this a little bit but unless you go into a lot of effort to write a parser you aren't going to do things like put in a comment okay to to help yourself out when you come back and look at stuff so what we're going to introduce in this chapter is XML XML stands for the extensible markup language and it is uh, an alternate format that you can use for, and it is, it's still plain text, so it retains the advantage of plain text that I can open it with VI and I can just look at it. Uh, but XML files will contain a significant amount of information in them that is additional to uh, just, you know, that it's not just in the formatting you can have the XML specify. So for example, it would lump all of the information for one room together, and then it would tell you, for example, that this is an exit, and this is the description, and this is the room name. And so the user wouldn't have to just guess at those things. And in fact, if you get an XML file from someone else, if the uh, XML file was done properly, you should be able to just read through it and figure out everything that's in there. Now. Flat text files are perfectly fine for tabular data. When we've done things like CSV, uh, that works very nicely. But if you have things that aren't tabular, like, like this map, 
then the XML file can be much more powerful. Um, and an example of this would be something like taking students' uh, grades. And so, uh, you know, if I had a flat text file that was a grade file, I might put inside of it something like the student's name um, and then what grades they have. could space them out, doesn't really matter. Uh, and then I'd have another one for next user and another one for the next person. Okay. That might cause problems having that blank line there. And this would be something that we could read in easily enough. But if I were trying to keep this as, say, grades for students, one of the things that I would really need to keep track of is uh, things like comments. Okay? I don't want to just have the student got a 65. Okay? If I'm going to give the student a 65, I'd like to have some comments on it. And a normal spreadsheet doesn't have a good way for me to include that. And so that's the example that I want to actually build up in, in our XML. And so uh, in the next video, actually let's go ahead and let's do, so XML is actually similar to something that most of you have seen. It looks a lot like a uh, HTML. Um, trying to think this, yeah. So if I pull down an HTML page and we look at it, you'll see, uh, and this one happens to have some new line characters because it was originally edited in the DOS editor, uh, you see lots of things that start with less than and end with greater than. Um, there's some additional formatting and in the next video we'll talk about exactly what this looks like. Now, uh, this file is not technically X valid XML. XML has stronger rules uh, than HTML. There is a version of HTML called XHTML where you have to follow the rules of, of XML in your file. Um, but this type of, of additional information is what the XML is going to add that we don't have in the in the flat text. Okay, we'll be able to specify that something we won't be using tables, but uh, you know additional information for everything that we that we put in there we'll be able to group it in in various ways and we use tags just like what you have in the HTML so we'll come back in the next video and we'll start looking at what elements what things go into an XML file and how we can use them to specify uh, to specify data um, that we are interested in so see you again soon